Indonesia is taking over the world, and it's not why you think it is. You see, Indonesia has one particular commodity that they are extremely rich in, a component that is commonly known as nickel. A simple and basic element that has risen in popularity due to its use in the modern world. The modern world that we are talking about in this video, however, is not for the use of today, but rather for the coming decade. Nickel is one of the most important components in the production of batteries, especially those used in electric vehicles. Hence, the future of the entire nickel industry is about to be bright, since electric vehicles are slowly taking over and replacing traditional vehicles. By 2030, it is even predicted that global electric vehicle sales would top 145 million, and by 2040, electric vehicle sales would account for 54% of new car sales. Simply, or even as common as it is, electric cars will obviously be the future of the entire automotive industry. This means that nickel, which plays a massive role in enabling the industry, is going to be vastly in demand. This brings us to Indonesia, a country known to be the world's richest destination of nickel reserves right beside Australia. The two countries respectively have 21 million metric tons of nickel reserves, which accounts for over 43.6% of the total reserves in the entire world. Therefore, there are rightfully only a few countries that would in the end benefit from this massive shift. However, even though there are only a few select countries that hold nickel within them, there are also a few countries that are trying to take advantage of this opportunity, and Indonesia is doing everything it can to capture this emerging industry. One of the particular reasons why Indonesia is on track to become the global manufacturing hub for electric vehicle batteries is not because they have the largest source of nickel reserves, but if that were true, then the other countries who also possess nickel deposits would also become an electric vehicle manufacturing hub. But that's not the case. What Indonesia's government is doing is that it is positioning the entire country aggressively on the use of nickel finished goods. They have done one important thing to capture this entire electric vehicle industry. They banned the exportation of raw nickels. Starting in 2021, the production of electric vehicles slowed and nickel prices moved up due to the introduction of the raw nickel ban. Furthermore, it sparked numerous debates among economists because, as cited by them, market intervention at this size would disturb the global nickel supplies and trigger trade conflicts. Hence, why there were a number of disputes submitted by many countries on the ban of nickel due to Indonesia. For instance, the European Union has submitted a trade dispute to the World Trade Organization on this particular matter, citing that the restrictions done by Indonesian government were unfair. Furthermore, it also cited unrest in the local community, since nickel products were already contributing massively to the local people. It was boosting export earnings to about a billion dollars annually, which was enough to employ a few thousand people and allowed them to feed themselves and their families. The deterioration, of course, cost jobs for many of them. However, this is where things get interesting. Indonesia may have crushed its raw nickel export industry. It may have forked a billion dollars or so in earnings and removed the jobs and livelihood in the local market. It may have also caused unrest in the international and local community. However, after all of these were criticized and known to be bad actions, Indonesia in the end won. You see, the months after Indonesia introduced these bans, it lured in a massive wave of foreign investments. From US giant Tesla and Ford, to South Korean based companies Hyundai and LG, to multinational and best sellers Japan based brands known as Toyota and Nissan, and so, so much more. These companies left and right are squaring up and entering Indonesia. For what? because they need nickel to produce the next wave of vehicles. Toyota has announced a $1.8 billion investment in the entire electric vehicle industry in Indonesia. Taiwan's Foxconn has said that they are investing over $8 billion, whereas the South Korean consortium led by LG Energy Solutions aims to invest over $9 billion. Simply, billions of dollars worth of foreign investments are flowing in every month after the ban. Billions of dollars are worth far more than the entire raw export industry of Indonesia. By all standards and simple calculations, 
These investments would simply add far more jobs to the local community and even set Indonesia to become one of the world's largest electric vehicle manufacturing hubs. In fact, just in the year 2021 alone, while raw nickel exports were slated to be about a billion dollar industry, the finished components and manufactured products that resulted due to the nickel were over $20.9 billion. How much bigger would the entire nickel-based manufacturing finished product would then be in the coming 5 to 10 years? A lot. The Indonesian government has introduced a massive and ambitious plan for 2030, which is just a few years ahead of us. Yet that plan has targeted the entire electric vehicle industry, raising targets such as Indonesia would by that year account for over 25% of the total electric vehicle sales. However, even if that ambitious target is still far years ahead of us, the short term impact is already being felt. By 2024, it is even expected that Indonesia would record its highest export value ever at $300 billion, in part driven by the downstream effect of nickel-related products. This even brought in many plans by the government, since the entire Indonesian country is extremely rich in natural resources. They are now aiming to replicate the success of banning raw nickel products for a particular and specific industry. The current leader of Indonesia, Joko Widodo, has cited that they will stop the exports of raw copper, bauxite, and tin to encourage foreign investments and help the country jump up the value chain in resource processing. But then again, these might spark a lot of controversies worldwide. After all, it may either cause a trade conflict between Indonesia and other major countries, or even cause other nations to join against Indonesia's unfair trade practices. Nevertheless, what the outcome would be for other products is out of our hands. But what we can see in this entire nickel industry of Indonesia has gone from a small industry to enabling Indonesia to become a worldwide winner. There are, of course, also challenges in this entire debacle. Indonesia, while it is a rich country filled with natural resources and possibilities, the country still lacks one important factor, human capital. This is the most important factor in the entire electric vehicle space because manufacturing, especially a high value product, is extremely difficult and we require a ton of highly skilled people. For Indonesia to receive billions of dollars of investments, it means that they would also need thousands to even hundreds of thousands of highly skilled people to cater to these investments. Otherwise, it would do no good for both the investor and Indonesia. Hence, why Indonesia needs to step up its investments in the entire engineering space of the whole country. If not, its foreign investments would rather be limited to how many engineers it can produce, or even it may force some companies to use their own employees from say China to South Korea or Japan to send in their own workers. But of course, these are just challenges, and they can also be argued. Further, there are a ton of people in Indonesia, and when we mean a ton, we mean hundreds of millions of people. Reskilling is difficult, but the country's fertility rate is consistently going upward and is expected to grow a lot more in the future. By 2030, we may expect that Indonesia will be able to produce sufficient engineering graduates to cater to these investments that they are trying to lure in. By 2040, it would likewise be able to produce a lot more. But anyway, these are just some of the points of the entire Indonesian electric vehicle and nickel industry. They can go a long way and some more challenges are still posing for the entire country and probably more opportunities that we may have missed out on in this video. Do let us know, however, what you think are the challenges of this entire space and if there are more opportunities out there. Thanks for watching.